In this lesson, we introduce the logical connectives and Boolean values in Racket. Um, so we're going to extend, firstly, uh, values. And for values, we're just going to have uh, true and false. And then for expressions, we're going to have the numerical comparisons and the logical or and end and not as well. Uh, so let's kind of go through that. I think the main difference with um, most programming languages is that in Racket, false is this pound f. And then everything that is not uh, pound f is considered to be true in Racket. Uh, but for a convention, you can also use pound t to represent true. And actually for um, some Boolean expressions such as the rel uh, comparisons, uh, you will see it represent returning either true or false. But as we will see in actually in, in record, things are a bit subtle. And in case of the logical and logical or, you might not even return true or false. You might return, um, you will return arguments of and or are. Okay, so let's kind of go through a few examples to see if uh, things go according to our um, according to our expectations. Um, so first we write true uh, and we write false. Then I'm going to write uh, one is one is greater than, uh, smaller than two. Uh, so the way I do this is uh, call function and then function is less than one, two. Um, and I can also do uh, the the inverse. Uh, so I could do, whoops, greater than, and I can do 2, 1. Right? Uh, no, wait, 1, 2. I want something that returns false. So this would return uh, false. This would return true. Um, right? So we, we should see in the output uh, true false, true, false, right? So let's see if that's the case. So we run it and we get true, false, true, false, exactly what we expected here. Okay, so that's great. Um, another thing we can do is we can uh, introduce the equals. So equals is like this. So if I do equals one, two is different. And if I do uh, two and two would be the same. So that returns true. But actually, I don't recommend people using the equals with this sign. And instead, you should use equal. So let's rewrite that so we don't. Because equal with the, with the equal sign, it only works for certain values. And with equal written like so actually works for everything. So let's just use that instead. Um, and then what we can do, we can also use not and say that um, one, two. So you can say that one, two is not equal and that's how you write. So, oops. So if I, oh, let me comment this out. Uh, so this is true and this would also be true, right? So let's see, let me comment out the previous examples just so, um, so these would be uh, values and these would be expressions. Okay. And these would be logical connectives. So we have this. So let's see if we see two trues. True and true. Okay, so this is working as well. Uh, so let's comment this out. And now we want to write um, we want to use the logical connectives. So we want to continue writing logical connectives. Let's do end. So one is um, equal two and three. 
and uh, true. So in this case, the first expression is true, and the second expression is also true. So the result should be true, right? And in fact, we can even write the um, truth table. So we see all the combinations. So we're going to do that for, uh, first, and then we're going to just confirm everything uh, works as expected. Um, false, false, that we want true, and then false, right? Just for the sake of, okay. Yeah, for some reason this, this scrolls down. Oh, I know what I can do. And do this. Okay. Okay. So in this case, we should see, let me comment this one out. So we should, uh, so we should see, in this case, we should see true. And in this case, we should see false. The remaining case should all be false, right? So if I run this, I see true, false, false. So everything as expected. Um, and if I copy paste this and I write the logical or, things should work as expected. So this would be true, and this would be true, and this would be false. So now I can comment this out. So yeah, everything works as expected, T, 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 and F. So. This is more or less what we have in record. Nothing too surprising. Um, so have or and R. Uh, one thing that is interesting in, in record that I might want to show you guys is that or actually works with multiple arguments, like the addition and the um, subtraction and multiplication division that I showed you before. So if I do true, 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 uh, it would also work. Um, let me comment it out. So essentially, as long as you have a single, as long as you have a single truth, uh, it will return true. But notice something a bit more interesting. If I write one, two, and three, because uh, one represents true, uh, as it's not false, uh, then notice what happens. It returns one because it returns uh, the ba basically the way or is implemented. It has this idea of short circuiting semantic uh, short circuiting uh, semantics, which we'll cover uh, in a few slides. Um, but the only thing it means it's something that you're used to in programming languages. When you have an or, as l this, the first thing that uh, evaluates the true, you stop. But in racket, you actually return the value. So what that means is that if I were to do uh, false, and then let me do let me do an example or example. So I have one, two, three, um, and then I have false. Basically, all falses are skipped until you return that. And then the the last case is when everything is false, right? So that's the only way for the for or to return false. So notice what happens. This is just a subtlety. It's not something that you need to uh, care too much for now. Uh, but notice that it returns one. So it's the first thing that is truth, truthy. Uh, some in some people call these truthy values. Um, so one represents true, and therefore it's the first value that um, the or expression finds, and it returns that. So that's why you have one there. And then two appears there because false is skipped. It's evaluated uh, or figures out that this is false. So it skips it and returns the first truth value, which would be two. And in this case, three. Uh, and then when everything is false, then it returns false. Okay. Um, okay. Basically, that's what I was saying. Another interesting thing is what I would like you to try is try to write or and end and try to write these examples with or and end. And see what happens when you use uh, zero uh, zero arguments. Think about what it what it should return and why. I think that's an important exercise to do. Um, 
I mean, the answer is here, but try to understand why. Um, okay, so these are uh, all examples. And one thing that I would like to talk a bit ab more about is short circuiting, right? And short circuiting, we can, can be very easily seen um, with the fun a special function called error. So an error uh, is basically an exception in Java or in Python, if you're aware of that. So it will abort execution, it'll throw out an, an error message. In this case is um, abort. So we'll just run this and see what happens. So I get an error and I get some context. And the error says abort because I wrote here abort. So if I write three exclamation marks, I see that there are three exclamation marks. And actually in the terminal, um, I get an error from the record command. So the exit status is, is faulty because of this error. Okay. So now we can play with this to kind of showcase the, the power of short circuiting semantics. So what I mean by this is if I do one, two, and three, and then I have an error somewhere. Um, it does not evaluate error, right? And it does not evaluate. So here, here it skips uh, here or does not evaluate, evaluate anything past one. So it does not evaluate two and it does not evaluate three. And this can actually be shown by writing errors everywhere. So if I do here and I do here, and this could be true as well. And I do two and I write three and I write four. Uh, I never see an, an, an error being thrown, right? Because the evaluation stops, and this is known as short circuits. It does not execute anything past uh, the first truth value. So similarly with AND, what I would like you to think now is what is the equivalent of this behavior with AND? Okay, now that you've learned how, how OR works and knowing what you know about AND, how do you think AND would work? Um, okay, so in the next video, we're going to cover branching, so conditionals, ifs, and so on.